This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Thursday, February 10. The Supreme Court will tomorrow hear a constitutional motion to determine whether the new Senate is properly constituted. Appeal Court Judge Madam Justice Cecily Chase will hear the matter at 9.30 a.m. The motion has been brought by former Attorney General Adriel Baffitt to resolve what he describes as controversy over whether the Senate can function with only 18 of 21 senators currently installed. Baffitt wants to hear the court declare the Senate is not properly constituted under Section 36 of the Constitution of Barbados and therefore Parliament cannot be lawfully formed according to Section 35. Some political scientists have weighed in on the court challenge brought by the former AG. Regional pollster Peter Wickham suggests the court's ruling will benefit Caribbean jurisprudence. The Attorney General has given the Prime Minister and the government the the best advice, and the advice that he has given is that in order to fill those seats with representatives of the Democratic Party, he needs to um, have a constitutional amendment, and that Parliament in the meantime can function. If, if this is the case, I don't really see the problem. No, I'm not denying that Gar Patterson and, and, and the AG, former AG, have a right to clarify it. And honestly, I'm looking forward to the clarification because it helps to build a body of Caribbean jurisprudence. And this is one thing that I would like you to, to quote me on is, is that, that I think that Caribbean jurisprudence benefits from this kind of conversation and also this kind of legal action. And, and, and frankly, I'm sorry it took so long. And I'm happy that they brought the master court because you will have a full ventilation of it. And this thing with with um with with um Madison and and um with the Watson and then going at it and you know arguing legal points, it, it will be settled in court and we will hear one thing while we are the other. However, he believes it will only serve to disadvantage the Democratic Labour Party. The Democratic Labour Party is further alienating themselves from the corridors of power in this country. And it's a self-inflicted wound which the Democratic Labour Party is continuing to allow to fester. Um, that organization has learned nothing from the last two defeats. And I think that they have set themselves a very, very clear navigational path towards a third. Because this is, I mean, what they're basically doing is saying, you know what, we want no part of any kind of legitimate um, opportunity to express our views in Parliament. Here is someone is saying to you, I'm giving you not only access to Parliament, I'm giving you access to influence in relation to naming the roles that the opposition leader would previously have named. Now bear in mind that even if they got the two senators, the Governor General cannot give them the right of consultation regarding the um, naming of anyone for the Electoral of Maldives Commission. However, political scientist Devron Bruce is not of the view that the DLP has much to lose, whatever the outcome of the court ruling. Bruce suggests that even though the DLP didn't have a presence in the lower house or the Senate from 2018, they were still able to rally support at election time. Action will still have to follow. Even if the court rules against them, I would assume that action on the president's part will still have to follow in the composition of the Senate. If that's not the case, then then the Dems lose significantly in the sense that they now, as you said, have no voice in either the lower chamber or the upper chamber. And that certainly would have political implications, but again, the Democrat Labour Party has shown that it has reversal despite its absence in both the lower house and the upper house, because we did have this circumstance between 2018 and 2022, 21, where there were no Dems in the upper house or the lower house. So. And they still existed as a political party. They still raised their voice as a political party. They still galvanized during the elections. And they will certainly still exist without those Senate seats. But certainly those Senate seats are, I would say, of added benefit to the Democratic Labour Party that they should not reject or refuse. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, a total of 519 new COVID-19 cases, 234 males and 285 females were identified on Wednesday from the 2,189 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The positive cases comprise 79 persons under the age of 18 and 440 who are 18 years and older. There were 186 people in isolation facilities, while 11,806 were in home isolation. A 94-year-old woman died on Monday, February 7, 
while another age 93 passed away on Wednesday, February 9. They were both unvaccinated and succumbed to the viral illness at the Harrison Point Isolation Facility. The death toll stands at 291 deaths. The community of Rosegate will have a spanking new part in the coming weeks. Member of Parliament for St. John, Charles Griffith, who launched a project on Wednesday evening, said the part, a generous donation from Edward Inks, the manager of Ghania Estates, will significantly benefit residents. He urged other private sector donors to get more involved in community projects. My mantra throughout my campaign was St. John is rising, and, and, and that is what we're seeing here today, another step in terms of having St. John rise to where I want it to be, to where you as members of the, the, the constituency want it to be. So I want to um, ask all of you who live in the area to make sure that you take care of it because it is a serious investment that Mr. Ince is putting in. And I hope that, you know, like I said, other communities are visited, not by Mr. Ince, but by other members who possess the, the resources to do such to make it a possibility. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Regional happenings in Jamaica, Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn has ruled that the police corporal implication in the haircut incident involving Rastafarian Nzinga King should not be charged. The Independent Commission of Investigation had also reportedly arrived at a similar opinion. The DPP has been awaiting a forensic examination report for the past three weeks to complete her ruling. We get the details from CVM Television. Scores of Jamaicans and Rastafarians incensed by the media reports that Miss King's dreadlock was allegedly cut by a female police while in lockup at the Four Paths Police Station rallied around the Clarendon family for months. The wait for a ruling on the matter ended after several months, but not how some would have hoped. The DPP in her ruling recommended that no criminal charges be brought against the accused female police in respect of the allegations made by Miss King in agreement with the Indicom findings on the issue. She also recommended that a male officer accused of assault occasioning bodily harm relating to Miss King's arrest, disorderly conduct and abusive language not be criminally charged, also in agreement with the Indicom findings. The DPP notes this did not prevent Miss King from, however, pursuing civil remedies in the matter, adding civil proof is on a balance of probabilities, which is lower than the criminal standard, which is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. While the DPP admits no recommendations have been made regarding King and the offense of creating public mischief, she says her office is aware the police have primacy of decision-making on investigations and laying charges. On the international front, AstraZeneca forecasts higher 2022 sales and raise its annual dividend for the first time in a decade. It has, however, warned that the boost from the COVID-19 products will fall. More in this report from Reuters TV. AstraZeneca has forecast higher sales for this year, but warned that a boost from COVID products would start to fade. The Anglo-Swedish drug maker also raised its annual dividend for the first time in a decade. It comes after fourth quarter profits beat expectations. Total revenue jumped 63% to just over $12 billion for the three months to December 31st. Overall, sales last year were up close to 40%, to more than $37 billion. AstraZeneca said five of its medicines had crossed the blockbuster threshold, meaning they generate more than $1 billion per year. Its highest selling product was the lung cancer drug Tegriso, making $5 billion in revenues. 
AstraZeneca made a modest profit from its COVID-19 vaccine. The treatment saw sales of just under $4 billion and was the company's second best-selling product for the year. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.